Hi, it's Dan, the real estate guy, coming to you from the home office once again, and today we're going to go over a couple of offers on the Dan Brook condominium. You might have followed that one so far. Remember, uh, that was a light fixer. It did take a little longer than I expected to get on the market. We had a little uh, uh, found a little discovered that we kind of needed to do the lino at the last moment. There was a tear in it uh, near the front door. I don't know when that happened um, or who did it. Maybe we just missed it on the first uh, inspection, but small tear and I thought we could work it out, glue it down and then after a, a couple of phone calls and a couple of looks uh, we decided just to go ahead and replace uh, with, a, with a good grade linoleum in the entryway that goes right into the kitchen area and um, kitchen wasn't bad but we wanted to match it all up, kitchen had some scratches in it um, but this came out real nice and it wasn't real expensive another, I think it was another six or seven hundred bucks to get that done so it, it postponed getting on the market by you know a week or so. It shouldn't have, but it did. It's okay. Remember the two golden rules in real estate. It takes a little bit longer than you thought. costs a little bit more. But this was a light fixer, um, mainly paint and the lino and some cleanup and some minor items. We were able to just clean the carpet. We didn't have to replace it. Uh, and that's pretty much because the property was built in 2005, a uh, fairly new property, and it, it came out pretty nice. So I wanted to go over a couple of offers. Uh, what happened was, remember, it's always fun to look back at the paperwork on the day that I purchased it, uh, about you know 45 days ago now. Um, I, I have my own handwriting right here, thinking that I could get really studying this thing over the day I bought it uh, for 86,000 in that range. Um, I thought I could get 119.9 up to about 122. We did list it. Uh, less than a week ago, or about a week ago, 10 days ago. Uh, we listed it for 121900 so right at the top of my range. I really felt, remember we were always trying to provide the best product at the best price, and I really felt that, that we were doing that. Um, whenever you're working this lower price range, you're taking a risk that you'll get an FHA offer or maybe even a VA offer, but more commonly an FHA offer that, that is asking for a credit back towards the closing cost, somewhere in the 3% range. So that's kind of expected. You're hoping you get a conventional or you know, your dream offer is cash, uh, but they don't happen quite as frequently as the folks in this price range getting an FHA with a very small down payment or asking the seller to credit them. So I was pleased that the first offer that came in was uh, no credit, however it was low. So I wanted to go over that with you and my thought process on how this should work. Remember, we're asking, uh, we put it on the market for 121900 hoping to get somewhere around 119 The offer comes in at 111900 Kind of an odd number, but that's what they did. Um, sometimes when they do that, I think they're, they're doing that to get, you know, maximum loan. But in this particular case, the good news was conventional um, financing with a total of $21,000 down um, even though they're only offering one eleven nine, uh, there is twenty one thousand dollars going down. Now this makes me think they probably can get a little bit bigger loan if needed. All right, right away I, I see through that low offer. I don't want that low offer, um, but I want to go through what I was thinking and how I came up with my counter offer so that you can kind of learn from that. You know, some folks will make an offer and I think automatically they think that I'm going to counter offer halfway between. Sometimes if I'm happy with that number halfway between, I might. I might even go 1000 towards them, showing that I'm willing to go more than halfway, let's get this transaction together. Um, now again, remember, we're always going to be thinking about the market conditions, the supply and the demand. Are there other units like this available? Um, are they better located? Are they better conditioned? Or are they worse? You know, we're always thinking about this. Because I believe a buyer should go out there and buy the best product at the best price. If I think I am that best product at the best price, I'm going to probably stand fast, especially when we've only been on the market, in this case it was six days. So I took a hard look at it. The other thing I liked about the offer, you know, other components of the offer we're going to look at is the closing time, uh, 30 days. That's reasonable. Conventional financing, they should be able to get that done. No credits. I don't have to credit anything um, towards their closing costs, which is always a big plus. And um, I took a good look at that and I looked at my buy sheet. Remember the buy sheet that I put together when I bought it? It estimates my net proceeds, my profit, my return on investment, my margin. So I go back and I look at that, you know, and I just, I just don't see going halfway with this customer. I just don't think it's going to happen. We've only been on the market six days. I know the property's super sharp. 
You know, I don't think there's others like it. Remember out there, the bank owned properties usually look and smell bad. Mine look and smell nice, right? <laughs> so uh, the short sales are almost undeliverable. I really consider a short sale to be not for sale. Uh, very few of them get approved in our area. Um, so I take a hard look at this. I decide, you know, why don't I go back at it? I was hoping for around 119 on this property. Why don't I counter back at 119,400? I like to pick an odd number. Like it looks like I put a lot of thought into that, right? Didn't go back at 119.9 or 119.5. I just went 119.4. Like I'm, I'm really trying here, but that's the best I can do. After all, there's probably going to be another offer, is what I'm thinking. Um, I then calculate, all right, based on this conventional financing and his loan amount. If, uh, if I counter him 119.4 versus his 111.9 and he increases his loan, how much is that going to cost him per month? It really isn't that much. I estimate this would cost him less than 50 bucks a month to uh, own that property. So is he going to look at that 50 bucks, that counter offer? If his agent is good, the buyer's agent, if the buyer's agent is good, they're going to say, hey, you know what, you got a counter offer. It's 119.4. I know that's towards the asking price. Um, but I did some calculations, and that's really only 50 bucks more per month, and maybe it's 30 or 40 dollars more per month. The rates are so low right now, um, you know. So the buyer should think, well, am I gonna, am I gonna let 50 bucks a month stop me from getting the property that I really want, right? So we countered back at the 119.4, and before we heard back, we got a cash offer. The cash offer was only 109,000, way too low for me to take it, but I like the fact that it was cash. It was closing in 20 days. Um, we had three days to respond, and yet we had just given the, the counter offer to the offer number one. Offer number one said, you know what? The agent said, we think we're gonna go for this, but we're gonna go take one more look. It's always good when they go back to take one more look. They're probably gonna go for it. So they go back to look, and we've got three days to respond on the cash offer. We know we're not taking the cash offer, but there's no reason to counter offer that cash offer until we know if number one buyer uh, says no. If they say no, I was going to counter that cash offer all the way up to the 119. Maybe I would have went 118 for them because their cash flows fast. But I wasn't going to go much off the value of this property. I just know they can't get a better one. So that's what I did. Um, during that period then, uh, they went and took another look. And yesterday they accepted our 119.4. Escrow is open and we're moving through the escrow now. All right. We'll keep the information for the cash offer guy, so that if I buy another property in that area similar to this one, we're going to be offering it to those folks before we go on the market. You always want to collect up the uh, contact information of buyers and buyers agents, basically the agent in this case, um, so you can offer more product if you get something in that same area. Could happen. So that's kind of it on our Danbrook offer. We're in escrow. We'll let you know when it closes. We'll get the closing statement and the check, and we'll go over that when it happens. If for some reason it falls apart and goes back on the market, we'll go over that as well. You're going to be learning from every transaction we do. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.